Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, dear fellow redeemed. The text that I would lay upon your hearts this morning comes from our Palm Sunday account. We'll be reading verses 8 through 11. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowds said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Your friends in Christ, fellow redeemed, listen closely to these two words. Jesus. Hosanna. Jesus. Hosanna. Did you catch the similarity between them? Well, probably not, because they don't sound all that similar in English anyways. But if I were speaking Hebrew this morning and said those words, then you would have caught the similarity, because they actually come from the same word. When the angel Gabriel appeared to Joseph in a dream and told him, you shall call the baby Jesus, he was really saying, you shall call this child Yahoshiana. And then years later, or Yehoshua, sorry, Yehoshua, years later when Jesus was walking into Jerusalem, this grown man whose Hebrew name was Yehoshua, the crowds shouted to him, Hosanna, which in Hebrew sounded like Hoshiana. Yes, it's really from the same word, Yehoshua, Hoshiana, Yehoshua, Hoshuana, Hoshiana, Hoshua, Yehoshua is the word which means Jehovah saves. Hoshiana means save us, we pray, or literally save, I pray. It's very fitting then that as the man who's named Savior, the man who is named Jehovah saves, as he is walking into Jerusalem, the people are crying out, save, I pray. This Lenten season, during our Wednesday night services, we've been looking at three word phrases that come up throughout the Passion history, which point out some important truths about Jesus. And that's the case this evening. Our three words of truth this evening, which we'll be focusing on, are save, I pray, or the word Hosanna. There's no more appropriate cry for us to call out because it's a cry to a king and it's a motto for a kingdom. Now, we can almost pinpoint the exact day and everything about the day that all of this was taking place. It was 30 AD. It was a Sunday morning, early spring, and Jesus had gone out with his disciples from Bethany, which we know is a little village just about three miles away from the temple. It was just on the, uh, just on the edge of the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem. How strange for Jesus to be setting out from Bethany, heading into Jerusalem, which in Hebrew means the house of peace. How strange for Jesus, because he knows that later that week, this house of peace would be anything but peaceful. No, there would be lots of spectacle and cheering and songs and praises going on this morning. But just a few days down the line, that house of peace would turn into a rebellious mob, screaming hatred, wanting nothing more than Jesus to die. And they would not stop until they had executed him. That's what lay at the end of this road. No matter how lovely and joyful the procession was on this particular morning, at the end of this journey lay darkness and death. And Jesus knew it. He knew everything that was coming. But for the disciples, they didn't quite know that yet. And for the rest of the crowds there that morning, darkness and death, that was the furthest thing from their minds. All of them, they were caught up in the moment. You see, Jesus and his disciples were there for the festival of the Passover. And that was why all the crowds were there too. This was the pinnacle of the Jewish life, the Passover. The celebration of deliverance from Egypt by the hand of the Almighty God. Yes, this was something to be excited over. 
This is why the people were gathered in procession heading up to the temple. There on the temple mountain, they could see Herod's temple glittering in its, its golden facade that he'd plated it with. Yes, this would have been a wonderful occasion for the people in Jerusalem. They must have been filled with these patriotic thoughts as well. You know, for a Jew living around the world, there was nothing greater than, Pentecost, for than, than Passover, and there was no better place to celebrate Passover than Jerusalem, the city of God where God's temple was. That's still the same thought today where around the world, Jews in our current day, when they can't make it to Jerusalem for the Passover, they always end their Passover celebrations with a particular prayer that says, next year in Jerusalem. This was what every Jew was looking forward to all year, to go to the city of God, to celebrate the Passover. This is where they were yearning to be. And listen to their, their wonderful hymns that they're singing too. They say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's a quote from Psalm 118, which we read earlier in our service. A, that's a psalm that's traditionally read during the Passover because it's considered the Passover psalm. The psalmist records there the deliverance that God had given them, and so every year they recite these words. And it couldn't have been more appropriate for this scene. Here they are at Passover, singing the Passover song as the king of the Passover rides in. They're singing, Hosanna, save us, I pray, and they're singing it to the one who had come to do just that. This was the perfect moment. If you had been there, you would never have forgotten this for the rest of your life. And the glory and, and the wonder of this scene really is why we sense a bit of emptiness to all of it. Because by the end of the week, the crowd's mood, the festive mood, it'll all be gone. No longer they're going to be shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David, save us, we pray. Instead, they'll be shouting, crucify him. The joy will be replaced by darkness. By the end of the week, the disciples who are marching along Jesus as he rides in on a donkey, those disciples will be long gone, having disappeared into the night, leaving Jesus to die by himself. The sad reality is that this crowd might have been crying out Hosanna with their voices, but it might not have been Hosanna with their voice of faith. For many, they were singing Hosanna at a king, but they weren't necessarily saying Hosanna to the king. It was all surface level. And how often do we really do the same? We get caught up in all the surface level stuff of church. We get caught up in tradition, in routine. We get caught up in the ritual of it all, but sometimes don't think of any of this as being much more than just that, ritual and tradition. Perhaps sometimes we go to church or, or watch church on YouTube at home, or we say our table prayers or we read a family devotion, and we don't necessarily do it because of the words from God that are coming to us, but simply because we feel like we have to, or it's just a routine that we've fallen into and we might as well do it. And sometimes we sing our hymns, we prayer, pray our prayers at God, but not necessarily to God. Is sometimes we can allow the high point of our week, Sunday morning, when we're able to gather either in person or online, gather around the word of God to be nourished, sometimes we just make that just another part of our week just something to get out of the way, part of the old routine. May God grant that our faith doesn't become the faith of that Palm Sunday crowd, not just a faith that just sings along and participates in church simply because that's what's expected, but that we sing along and that we participate because what Jesus came to do is not just the most important part of our week, but the most important part of our entire lives. Holy Week this week that we're entering in now. This is really the perfect time to focus on these things. You know, with all of our special 
worship services and our special liturgies and our, our special decorations that we have here at church, we need to remind ourselves that it's not about all that. It's about all of this that Jesus did. We can't go to the Good Friday service and, and see or hear the Good Friday readings and enjoy the service of darkness and the somber affair that it is and just do all that simply because it's different. No, we must also go to Good Friday and stand at the foot of the cross and stand in wonder and awe that, that God would allow all of this to happen to himself for me and for you. We can't just go to Easter service just because we feel like there's at least one service we have to go to throughout the year, and it might as well be Easter. We can't just go to Easter service and look forward to it simply because we sing a lot of hymns on it that we like a lot. No, we need to go with the understanding of the power of Christ's resurrection, understanding when the empty tomb was opened that morning, that was God's promise, that he guarantees that death will not hold you or me either. There's a lot more meaning to all this than just the ritual. We cannot join with the crowd shouting at the king, lest what God said through the prophet Isaiah becomes true of us. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Now, don't come crying Hosanna at the king. Instead, today, let's cry Hosanna to the king. And there is a difference. For crying Hosanna to the kings mean that, means that we confess that he is our only hope of salvation in this life. Crying Hosanna to the king means that we despair of thinking of ourselves as being able to please God in some way. Despair of thinking that if I can only stop sinning in this way, then God will be happy with me. No, we despair of all of that and instead come to God simply naked and poor and with nothing to offer. And then God clothes us and makes us wealthy beyond all measure. To cry Hosanna to the king means to come to him with true faith in our hearts and cry out, save me, I pray, for I have nowhere else to go. Because of God's undeserved love for us, he has made it possible that we do cry out, Hosanna, save us, we pray, to the king. And God tells us by his grace that he does hear us. In Psalm 3, David says, I call out to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy mountain. In David's day, the, the holy mountain that he's referring to was the temple in Jerusalem, where the ark was kept. Cry out to God there, and God would hear you. God's holy mountain today is Calvary, where Christ's cross is. From there, God hears our prayers, and God answers. From his holy mountain, Jesus cries out, It is finished. All of our sins, past, present, and future, already accounted for and already paid for. There, on the cross, hangs all of the answers to the problems that we're looking for. There is our king, crowned with thorns, but crowned with glory and honor as well. So let's cry out to him. Cry out to him with our hurts, our pains, our confusion, our problems, our fears, our worries about the future, our doubts about his loving care. Let's cry out to him because there he promises to hear. There comes the response, I am your king. He is the proof that God will forgive us. He is the proof that God is willing and able to help you. He is the proof that God will help you, will comfort you, will encourage you and strengthen you for the days ahead. Based on this confidence in Jesus, we can say together with the psalmist, praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Hosanna. It's a cry to a king. It's a good cry for us to give to the king. And it's also the perfect motto for Jesus' kingdom. Matthew records that the people sang, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I think most nations have a national motto. You know, they choose a, a phrase that best fits what their nation is all about. 
here in America, I, I believe it's still our national motto, e pluribus unum, if I said that right. Out of one, out of many, one. It points to the many states and peoples and different nationalities and everything else. And out of all of those many different groups, we have one nation. So it's really quite a fitting motto for our country. Well, Hosanna is likewise a fitting motto for our nation in Christ Jesus. Save, I pray, because God's kingdom is about one thing, about saving sinners, about the eternal release from the bondage of sin and eternal life in indescribable bliss and joy. This is the goal of Christ Jesus. This is the goal of our congregation, the eternal salvation of our souls. This is the reason why Jesus is king. This is the reason why Jesus marched into Jerusalem. This is the reason why Jesus went to the cross and rose again from the dead and brought us into his kingdom to bring that salvation about. And I always wonder how many people on that Palm Sunday really understood that. The crowd did not. In fact, we know that when Jesus was riding in, they had ideas of a political dynasty. They had ideas that he would set up the glorious old kingdom that David had left. We know that because in Mark's gospel, it says that the crowds also shouted, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. But Jesus would say to Pilate later that week, my kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom was not about international peace treaties. It was about eternal salvation, about eternal peace with God. His kingdom was not about winning against Rome, but about winning Romans and Greeks and Jews and Gentiles all around the world to cry out in true faith, Hosanna to the king. Sometimes we might lose sight of what God's kingdom is all about. Sometimes we might come to church for family or friends or perhaps come because it's part of the routine. And if that's ever the case, well then, days like today, when we're not mostly able to gather together, these would break us. They would make us so discouraged because we wouldn't get the family and friends. We wouldn't get to continue in our routine. So instead of that, instead of looking for these things, let's have the cry of Hosanna on our lips. And let's, that, let's keep that as our motto for why we go to church, why we watch these service on YouTube. Hosanna, save us, we pray. If that is your motto, then you will never be disappointed. Even if your Sunday morning is spent looking at a video on your phone, crying out, Hosanna, save, I pray, O Lord, even with these less than ideal circumstances, you are getting exactly that, and you can never be disappointed. So this week, as we prepare our hearts for Good Friday and then Easter, let's keep that cry of Hosanna in our hearts, crying out from our grief over sin, crying out, save me, I pray, crying out, looking to the King who has come, who with an iron will and steady resolve would not be turned away from his final destination because he came to save you, and save you he did. Thanks be to God. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all our understanding will guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.